Hey guys, and welcome back to Shuffle. So, we are now in the summertime, July 22nd, which is actually my, uh, my sister's birthday, which is funny. Anyways, yeah, so we're at the pool. The students jumped into the blue water as if they've been waiting for this moment. It says this, or it's this time of year again. Dear God, she's like wearing nothing. <laughs> Summer means the pool, the beach, the pond festival, and shaved ice, huh? Summer is your favorite, isn't it? Uh, crap, I forgot their voices already. Could I have some suit looks really cute though? I prefer one pieces over the bikini type because I don't know. I don't know. There's something about one pieces that are just adorable, and some of them are really cute, like Kareha's. And then this is just no. <laughs> of course, Japanese people love summer, which is actually very true. I love summer sometimes, but it's not so hot. I don't get it, but I agree. Me too. Summer is best. Girls wear fewer clothes in summer. Girls wear bathing suits in summer. Girls expose themselves more in summer. Especially today. We've got the cool beauties here. I live for moments like this, you know. You better not commit any crime. I remember telling him the same thing last year. It's only this time of the year that I wish I didn't know him. Pardon me, ladies. If you'd like, I can accompany you. Oh, no? Oh, well, I guess that's fine. Or I guess that's bad then. Hello! You are the poison carrot from the class, aren't you? What would you say if I could beat your five-second record? Midoriba! Wait, what? Midoriba! I won't let you not hit on girls, but at least be a little more courteous. Like a fish in water, Hitting on one girl after another, his bravery is showing his reason for existence. Okay, that was kind of cute. Because at least it's covering all around her back. <laughs> and it's frilly and has a bow! Ren Coon, aren't you going to swim? Uh, sure, I'll be right there. I see Fia having fun in water. I raise my hand and walk to the poolside closer to her. There are others who are also uh, having lots of fun. Hers is so cute too, oh goodness. Hey, do you know why they open the pool during the summer break? We've learned about the human world in the world of God, but other schools open their pools a lot earlier. If you... Uh, if you want to ask that, she's the one, right, Mayumi? Yes, sir, here I am. Indeed, just as you say, opening the, or opening the pool during the summer break is really late, but there are two reasons for that. The first reason is the season. The rainy season is in June and July, and as you can see, our pool isn't covered. I don't know why they didn't think of putting the roof over it, but put that aside for now. Swimming in pool depends on the weather. You get wet anyway. Why do you have to cancel because of the rain? Rain or thunderstorms, the weather shouldn't matter. I don't know about thunderstorms, though. The second reason is the problem with the school's events. The most important, as well as the most feared, the test. The tests start by the beginning of July. And as soon as the tests are over, it's summer break, so opening the pool in the beginning of July only interferes with test study, so it's meaningless. Anyway, those are the reasons why we can't open our pool during the summer... or why we open our pool during the summer break. There will be swimming classes in September. I don't know if I can understand the reason. But you are free to use it, so why are you complaining anyway? That's true! Oh, hers is adorable too! I'm sorry for being late. Oh, you bought
got a new bathing suit! Yes, because the old one is getting a little too tight around the chest. Wow! Mayumi-chan, are you okay? What? Well, what's the matter? Don't worry, just leave her alone for now. I don't think you should go. What do you mean? Sometimes facing reality can be very cruel. You have something that Mayumi doesn't. Summer is the season when that's exposed, clearly. Ah, the size of our boobs! How could you be so insensitive? Here I am, trying hard not to really say it. Uh, well, I'm sorry. Not everyone's the same. Life isn't fair. Oh! Wait a minute. What? So this is a romantic scene with Kaede then. Huh. Is that the route that I ended up taking? Oh man, they skipped over my birthday! That's not fun. <laughs> that's not fair. I was about to say fun. But that's not fair. <laughs> oh well, who cares? <laughs> What a beautiful day! I go out onto the porch and see the bright sunlight. A sunshine. The sky is clear blue and I can hear the noisy cicadas. After the rainy season, we haven't even had a drop of rain. Rim, uh, Rim John, could you pass me the basket? This one? I hear voices from below. As I look down, I see Kaede putting the laundry out. Kamula is helping too. They look like real sisters. They're famously beautiful sisters. Nobody would complain about that. I guess the brother will join the beautiful sisters. As I joke to myself, I leave the room. <gasps> oh, this is such a stunning picture! I am absolutely loving the artwork in this game. Kaede, Kamula. Are you almost done with the laundry? Good morning, Rinjun! Good morning. I'm sorry. I'll get the breakfast ready now. Rinjun, could you wait for a minute? Oh, don't worry. There's no hurry. Finish what you're doing. If you need help, I'll come down. Oh no! Please rest up! No, Rin. I'm scolded by both of them. I thought maybe I could join in with the two sisters. No, you can't! No. I feel lonely. You still can't! No means no. Hey, you guys are leaving me out! I don't care! You still can't! No, no, no! Hey, Kaede, are you still bothered by what happened by any chance? No. She answers firmly before I can say any more. I won't say I'm not bothered by it, but I still can't forgive myself. But I'm not taking care of you because I feel guilty. I'm doing it simply because I want to. I like taking care of you. If she says this clearly, I can't say anything else. It's my privilege to take care of you. I feel bad to or I feel bad for Sia-san and Rin-san, but I won't let anyone else take over this job. I only let Rimchon help, or help me. <laughs> Her smile captivates my heart. Aww. Oh, another one. Okay. So I guess we're going Kaede's route. I guess. <laughs> the girl crumbles down onto the cracked ground like a doll. Even her footings. Uh, melts down to nothing. In the dark empty space, her body floats without moving. Oh no, are we getting into Kaede's backstory? <laughs> oh no! Her fair skin stands out in the jet black air, and her purple twin tail spread out in the darkness. Primula? Er, Primula? I mumble her name, but no answer. Primula? I scream the name while picking up her tiny body. Her eyes don't see me. 
Her arms hang and her purple eyes look empty, as if she's a broken toy. Pramula! There's no answer. No matter how many times I call her, there's no warmth. There's no will. She's just like a doll. And just like a man-made doll. A doll with broken strings. It doesn't move anymore. The light from the window is burning my retinas. Sweat is soaking the shirt. I only feel discomfort. And I only feel discomfort. Oh, okay, so it was just a dream. And it was Primula, not Kaede, okay. <laughs> I get up and stare at the wall in front of me blankly. Was that a dream? I look down at my hands and feel relieved to see there's no girl with purple hair in my arms. I'm thankful that I'm not in the darkness. I guess she's gone out with Kaede. I go to Primula's room because I want to see her. Uh, but I don't see her in the empty room. What a nightmare. That Pramula in my dream. That was surely a doll. She has the appearance of a doll. A homunculus. A doll without life. A doll that doesn't move. A doll that is created. Then I understand for the first time that Pramula is an existence that's created. The realization is spreading through me, making me feel worried. The fear of being artificial is grabbing onto me. Oh, Although it's still early, on, er, early in the day, the temperature is already high. Staying at home only makes me depressed, so I jump out into the summer sun, hoping that it will make or take my mind off of my worries. But the next moment, a familiar big figure appears in front of me. Hey, Rindono! I hear you and Primula are getting along just fine. Eh? Uh, yeah. I answer with a little smile. By the way, Primula was created by both the world uh, of gods and devils. Then, does that mean this king of gods knows some details too? Do you know anything about homunculi? The world of gods and devils work together, right? Something like that. I'm the superintendent of the world of the gods, after all. Then, could you tell me a little about homunculi? I know that you made three altogether. I also know that the other two are probably dead. But, why did they die? Would the same thing happen to Primula? I remember the sight of the girl who turned into a doll in the darkness. She doesn't see, doesn't ask, and doesn't speak. That's exactly like the scene from eight years ago. The king of the gods put his hands under his chin and shows the face as if he's thinking about my question. I see. So, Mabo didn't tell you that part, huh? Is it something I shouldn't know? Sort of, but I guess you have the right to know, Rindono. His face gets cloudy just for a moment. He continues with such a serious face. About the first question, that's simple. The bodies couldn't endure. Couldn't endure? Have you heard about the reason why homunculi were created? Ah, uh, to research about magical power, and a strong power was needed. That's right. In other words, a strong power was the minimum requirement. Then, how can we create something with such power? The first one was a strengthening. We chose someone from the devils and forcibly strengthened her power. It's pointless to say the result. The power itself was actually strengthened, but the body couldn't hold the power. The power was much more than what she could handle. After the first failure, the second one was the reproduction. It's what you call cloning in the world of humans. We remodeled the already powerful DNA of a devil and we raised it with even more power. We used the strongest powers with, or of both prominent worlds and a body capable of it. By bringing up the ability while strengthening it, we were planning to bestow it with more power than anything we've ever seen before. What we didn't know was that the reproduced DNA deteriorated quicker than we expected. It was going well for a while, but it was a failure again at the end. 
They both received great power, but both bodies couldn't hold the power. Then, Pramula too? Calm down. Now the second question about Pramula. There shouldn't be any problem. The third one was created after the two failures using the method of manufacture. Power of both the gods and the devils, and a body that can handle such power. We manufactured it from nothing. From nothing? How can that be possible? Normally it's impossible, but many failures, many coincidences, and many miracles. When they are all mixed in, the astronomical odds become reality. Primula is an embodiment of a miracle. We can't make her ever again, even if we try. There's no replacement for her. She's the one and only. The one and only, huh? So anyway, we raised Primula in a sheltered environment. Maybe we overprotected her. I guess that's the reason why she is the way she is. I'm counting on you, Rindono. Please take care of that emotionless girl. <sighs> the king of the gods smiles big, then slaps my back a few times and leaves. Hmm. The one and only. That's why she was overly cared for. If she wasn't cared for, she'd just be an experiment. She lost her emotions. She doesn't have blood relatives or a family. She just lives as time passes by around her. Pramula. But I think I can see her emotions behind her lack of expression. I think I can see a sad gleam deep inside of her purple eyes once in a while. The smile she showed when I gave her the stuffed animals. I want to see that smile one more time. I truly feel that way. Alright, another thing with Kaede, I guess. Primula makes an announcement when Kaede and I finish her dinner. We head to her room as she calls us. When we arrive, we see her things all packed. Kaede and I stop and look at Primula. What? What's going on, Primula? I'm going to Marinay's. Rinchan? Did something happen? Kaede asked her sadly. I'm sure she thinks she has done something wrong. Actually, I feel the same way. But Primula shakes her head. No. You two have been so much fun together, or have so much fun together, so I don't want to intrude. Kaede and I look at each other, then look at Primula again. What do you mean, intrude? That's right! We've finally become a family! I want to be together! I like both of you. That's why I can't stay here anymore. Primula sounds sad. I know she's doing this for us. Kaede and I, and Primula in the middle. She feels she's intruding. She thinks she's bothering us. That's the sad conclusion she came to. It's probably her first emotion towards others. Primula's lonely feelings towards others. Primula? Rinchan? Uh, thank you. Oh. Primula speaks softly to us. What kind of feelings did she put in those words? She shows a smile at the end. She's not a doll. She's a girl whose name is Primula. The fact that we're a family won't change. It's just that we won't be at the same place. You can always come back, okay? As I rub her head, she nods. We lived as a family for about a month. That time is now ending. The game is over, and things are going back to how they were, that's all. She's just going back to her real family. No, oh, like a stray cat! Oh, no! Oh, dear goodness. So, this is the ocean. The bright white sunlight is reflecting on the surface of the blue sea. It sure is the symbol of the summer. The ocean is the summer. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, God! This is where I'm gonna end it, too, because 
I am all out of time. Oh no. But I hope that you've enjoyed it. And if you did, please give it a big thumbs up down below. <laughs> I'm sorry for scarring all of you with these older men in speedos. I didn't mean to. But I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>